Give them hell, Indiana Jones! Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. Ooh, what alliteration released this past weekend in 2023 and is directed by James Mangold, who's also directed such films like Copland, Girl Interrupted, Kate and Leopold, Walk the Line, 310 to Yuma, The Wolverine, and Logan. And this film is starring for one last ride, Harrison Ford, of course, Phoebe Walter-Bridge, Antonio Banderas, John Rhys-Davies, Toby Jones, Boyd Holbrook, and Mads Mikkelsen. Indiana Jones's life is crazy crumbling all around him with him recently retiring and marrying, divorcing him. Well, one day his estranged goddaughter comes back into his life, saying that she is looking for the thing that drove her father mad, the Dial of Archimedes. But she's not the only one looking for the Dial, as a former Nazi nemesis of Indiana Jones, Hogan Voller shows up, also proclaiming his claim to the Dial. So now it's a race between both parties to find it and to harness its power. We haven't had a new adventure from Indiana Jones since 2008 with The Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, and if you've watched that movie, you probably have a good indication why it's taken so long, because that movie, even though it had some great moments to it, and some nice moments to it, I also have to remind myself that it had Shia LaBeouf swinging through the jungle on vines with a whole bunch of CGI monkeys. <laughs> It's funny, every once in a while, I'll tell myself, like, no, 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 it wasn't as bad as you think it is. It's kind of like candy corn, where every year at Halloween, it comes out, and you're like, oh, yeah, that looks like fun. And then you take a bite of it, and you go like, no, son of a bitch! That's what Kingdom of the Crystal Skull is for me every single time. I think about it, I'm like, oh, no, there were some fun things about it, and maybe the aliens, maybe that's not so bad. But then I think about Shia LaBeouf in the jungle on the vines, and I go like, nope, nope. It was so bad. So when they announced that they were doing Indiana Jones 5 and they started releasing posters and trailers for this movie, I purposely avoided it. Not because I didn't want to be spoiled for anything, but because... Honestly, I didn't care. I had the original Indiana Jones trilogy that I grew up with. Last Crusade is my favorite of the trilogy. It's my definition of what I think of when I think of action-adventure. Raiders of the Lost Ark is classic. Temple of Doom is a fun-ass roller coaster. It's weird, but it's fun. So if Disney is going to be advertising towards me again that, hey, you know that thing from your childhood? We're not going to run it into the ground here. So come and watch this movie. I'm going to sit back and be like, yeah, I'll probably watch it, but I'm not enthusiastic about it. And maybe Maybe that was the best thing for me going into this because my expectation bar was so low that now that I watched this movie, I think it's fantastic and I think it's a lot of fun. Do I think it's the best of the franchise? No, but I would probably put this at like number three. This movie did a lot of things right and the cinematography here I think is great and how they showcase the 1960s. It didn't look plastered on, it didn't look fake, it looked like he was riding that horse through the streets of Brooklyn in the 1960s. 60s during the space race. And how freaking cool is it that the man who really created this character, and I'm talking about George Lucas or Steven Spielberg, really when you think about who this character is, you think about that amazing Indiana Jones theme. And how cool is it that John Williams, one of the greatest, if not the greatest, film composers of our time, he is still alive, and he's still scoring the fuck out of this thing. The score to this movie, it made me so happy. Just listening to it, it sounded like classic Raiders stuff. There are little sections in the music where there are callbacks to moments that do happen in Raiders and in other Indiana Jones films. It's really cool that John Williams is here still doing this, and he's like 150 years old. That is awesome. And it's really awesome that Harrison Ford is back, and this film is embracing his age. That was another big, weird thing about Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, they were treating Indiana Jones like he was still young, and he was still able-bodied. He was jumping around on beams, and he was basically acting like a superhero. And we've never really had Indiana Jones as a superhero in the original trilogy. He's an archaeologist. He's a big, gigantic nerd that punches a lot of people. Kingdom of the Crystal Skull tried to make him into a superhero here, they actually treat him like he's an elder statesman. He has dialogue in here about how his bones are just cracking, and they're aching, and he 
<laughs> he's asking himself, like, why the hell am I doing this? He's climbing up a cliff, and he's like, what the hell am I doing here? Probably the aspect of this movie that I appreciate a lot is the idea of, hey, we're embracing the age. We're embracing that these characters, even though they were awesome back in the 80s when we grew up with them, they get old. People get old, and one day those people will not be here anymore. So instead of ignoring that people age or ignoring that people do eventually die on this planet, let's embrace it and let's have fun with where you're at in your life, Indiana Jones. And it's really the whole idea of this movie, the whole message of this movie is the idea of time and what you would do if you had more time. I've seen other people's reviews on this movie and they're all talking about there is a choice that's made in the third act. It's a big swing and if you're into it, you're gonna love it, but if it's too weird for you, then you're probably gonna hate this movie and just completely shut yourself off. For those of you that didn't get the thing that happens in the third act, I'm not gonna spoil it for you, but two things. One, it's Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. It's about a dial. What do dials do? Therefore, like, what do you think is going to happen? What do you think that choice is? Come on. And two, we've had magical arcs that melt people's faces. We had a guy who rips out people's hearts and the chest reseals itself up. And they have voodoo blood from Kali that hypnotizes people. We have a magic cup that magically heals people. And we have aliens. So, like, those were fine, so I'm totally okay with the decision of what happens in Act 3 of this film. I'm totally behind it. Totally makes sense. And I think this is a fitting end to the saga and the adventure of Indiana Jones. I don't think there's any need to pass the mantle of Indiana Jones, because Indiana Jones is not a mantle. Indiana Jones is a person. He's an archaeologist. He's a big, gigantic nerd, like I said before. He is a human being, and I like that this film really focused on the human being aspect of Indiana Jones and not this superhero-esque figure that Kingdom of the Crystal Skull tried to do. Mads Mikkelsen, I think, is a great villain. He has great motivation. That's one of the things in these indie films that, you know, like, I don't know about the villain or their mode. They're, they're evil because they're evil. They're evil because they're Nazis or they're communists. Mads Mikkelsen, yes, he is a Nazi, but he also has great reasoning as to why he's doing things and reasons why he is going after this ancient artifact. And Phoebe walter -Bridge Bridge, I think, does a fine job of playing Indiana Jones' goddaughter. She sparks a lot of life out of him, and just into the film, actually. There are a lot of points where the energy, the script is lulling, and then there she is with the joke, or just the energy that she's bringing in her performance. It's very refreshing. Now, that being said, this film is two hours and 20 minutes long. I think it's the longest Indiana Jones film, and you can definitely tell it's the longest one. There are moments in here that I'm wanting everything to to just speed up and to go a little bit faster. But again, that kind of plays into the retirement age of Indiana Jones. At the beginning, or at least when we flash forward to the 60s, from the amazing 1940s prologue that we get in here, Indy's sad. His life is shit, and he kind of just trudges along. It's not until his goddaughter comes in and kind of gives him this little spark of adventures when he starts to become that Indiana Jones that we know and love. Now, I did mention that prologue. I think the prologue is great. There's all that de-aging technology that a lot of people uh, probably don't know how they feel about it. For me, you know, with our creation of AI, artificial intelligence, I think it's something to be respected. I mean, we are the creators. We are creating intelligence. I think that is a great and wonderful thing. So for us to use technology where we can take someone and de-age them, I'm totally behind it and I'm embracing it. Why not? Let's do it. Especially for nostalgia pieces like this. You actually get to see the Indiana Jones from Temple of Doom, from Raiders of the Lost Ark. Is it 100% perfect? No. There are moments in here where the mouth is barely moving but Indiana Jones is talking. But for the most part, I totally bought into it and it worked for me. The sound mixing of his voice though didn't really match up with what they were trying to do. I think it was Harrison Ford delivering the lines, but because he sounds like he's just swallowed a whole bunch of gravel, trying to de-age his voice or probably using an impersonator didn't quite match up. 
to the age of what they were presenting him at. Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny I think is a lot of fun and maybe I'm just in a great mood this year. I've had so much fun watching the new releases in 2023. I don't think there's a new release that I have been like this is the worst thing I've ever seen before. I've just had a ton of fun and this you can add on to that list. This movie is just a ton of fun. It pokes at your nostalgia but it's a great next chapter in this iconic character and it's a great and a send-off for this character. If you love the original Indiana Jones trilogy, I don't know how you could watch this and be disappointed because I had nothing but a smile on my face. I really enjoyed this film and hopefully all of you will too. I'm gonna give Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny three and a half out of five Blu-rays. I am above average. So guys, have you seen Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny? What did you think about it? What is your ranking now of all of the Indiana Jones films? Whatever you thought, comment below and let me know what you thought about it. And as always, if you like what you see here, if you like my take on movies, then hit the subscribe button and make sure you hit that bell. See you all the next time I'm released next movie review. So guys, I will see you next time on the channel, but in the meantime, be well, be good to each other, and go watch a movie. Take care, guys.